Crack everybody, how are you getting on? You're all very welcome to Bookshot. Here we go, episode 174 for Friday. Well, if you're listening to this as a Patreon, you will have gotten this on Wednesday the 10th, but it's Friday the 12th for your average Joe and Josephine. How are you getting on? Very, very welcome. Apologies, we're still a bit echoey. If you listened to the Ramble Pod the other day, it's still a touch echoey. It's not too bad, but look, the studio above is taking shape and we should have a nice bit of soundproofy, better microphones and all the rest of it. Going forward, my thanks actually to the patrons because you've been able to pay for some of the new lighting that is arriving on Monday. So we'll have some new lighting and whatnot. So when it comes to doing the, you know, I'm going to be doing live Ramble Pods as well. And all the rest of it, I'm going to be doing a lot more. Green green screen has been put up. Soundproof and has arrived. I'm just putting up a few stud partitions, freestanding stuff, just to create a bit of a studio space. You know what I mean? Because we may as well fucking do it right if you're going to do it at all. Um, thanks everybody who's new Patreons. I thanked them on the Ramble Pod the other day. Fair feckin' play to you. Thank you very much for supporting the show. Ye make it happen. Ye physically actually make the show Teak. There'd be no point in doing it if nobody was actually fucking throwing a few hound at it. But for that, of course, you do get the ad free options and you get all the videos and you get to join in the live podcast, which I'll be doing the week. Hopefully, I'll get it done the end of next week. Yeah, so we'll be looking at probably this day next week, possibly, or maybe even the Saturday. We'll see, depending on how. Oh, is, are, is the rugby off that weekend? I think it is. So, depending on how it goes, we'll. Possibly do one on the Saturday night. Why not? We have a few drinkies and all the rest of it. So if you want to jump on board, the minimum entry in is three doll hairs. So it's easier than it sounds. You'll be in and out, especially if you have things like PayPal. You'll be in and out in fucking 30 seconds. And why not? It's cheaper than getting into the fucking pub. And you get a gang of patrons hanging out, having the crack, drinking a few drinks and all that. We even have people as far away as Canada. Besties over there trying to drink in the middle of the day with the rest of us alcoholics in the evening times. And it's all good crack. And that's how you support the show. You know yourself. I'm not going to talk too much more because I have a bunch more Ramble Pod stuff to do. And I have to get on the road because as you're hearing this, for your average person, I will be on gearing up because I've finished off the last bit of content. Because I am doing a live show with a couple of sketches thrown in for the Laughter Lounge for St. Valentine's. There you go. I actually created some work, some comedy work. These are all good, good, good signs. Good signs. Very, very excited. So I won't actually hang around for too much longer. And I will introduce today's guest. Today's guest, he has been in a fucking ton of stuff. And by pure fluke, turned up on Netflix. A show that we became fucking... Oh, Jesus, it was fucking class. We ended up fucking just being addicted to this fucking show. So, also, he's been in The Savage Eye. He's been in everything. He was, for a moment, in Father Ted. He, you know, he's a fucking brilliant act. He's some crack, the same fella. And again, I will apologise if you didn't listen to Ramble Pod the other day. I apologise ahead of time for my fucking laughing like a hyena down the drain when I came to him reading his unbelievably terrible book, Chicago Blues. It was fucking incredibly brilliantly bad. Brilliant. Like, it would take nearly more effort to write it so badly. And every time he read me a segment from it, do yourselves a favour. It'd be a good one to just give somebody as a gift. I'll put the link in the show notes for where you can get the book on Apple, I think it's, or Amazon. And do yourself a favour, do a friend a favour who knows, who likes to read a terrible thing. It's well fucking worth it. I had a powerful time. I nearly lost a fucking lung laughing so hard. So sit back and enjoy Paul Tyler. Paul Tylak, welcome to Bugshot. Thank you very much, brother, for, for jumping on board. Happy to be here, Tom. I'd forgotten yeah. how amazingly jealous I am of your great teeth. You have a fantastic <laughs> teeth. They're gorgeous. Are they all your own? Uh, no, some of them are borrowed from friends, like <laughs> just like uh, after fights and stuff. But uh, just because uh, they feel guilty after beating me up. But I, uh, yeah, no, they are. Yeah, uh, I did, Actually, I have a chip out of one tooth. And I, I got an actual filling in it, which made it look perfectly straight. And the night I got the filling, I ate something like, just like McCain, but just toasted or something. And it, it dropped right out of it. And I rang up the dentist the next day. I was just, you know, the way you don't want to say like, you know, like to a mechanic, you might say. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. That car just stopped on the motorway that you gave me back yesterday. 
at this, like I, so I just said to the secretary in there, uh, yeah, that tooth that you, the chip, the filling you put in has come out straight away, <laughs> just so you know. It's just like, just so you know. Because <laughs> they're not going to do anything about it. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm not taking yeah, a bad job now, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have great set of chompers there. Uh, they're, they're all right. That's all they are. It's all right. They wouldn't be up to Paul Tylex standards or anything like that. The, um, the last obviously. time I think, we, I think we, yeah, obviously, I like that. Just for the audio listeners, in case you're wondering, they're obviously not up to Paul Tylex standards. <laughs> that's actually a, a, a measurement of teeth uh, perfection. Is the, it's like the Scoville scale for, for chilies. It's yeah. the, the, the Paul Tylex scale of great teeth. And well, apparently, I'm half um, Sri Lankan and half Irish. I don't mean apparently I am that. But, <laughs> I was wondering, uh, <laughs> I was going, oh, did, does he want me to confirm it for him or something? I don't. <laughs> no, that's like saying, uh, yeah, my name's Paul Tylek. Uh, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Uh, no, but uh, uh, Indo, Indo-Irish, Indo-Celtic is the strongest teeth you can have. I remember looking that up years ago or just discovering that years ago, hearing it somewhere and going, yes, I'm, I'm the Indo-Celtic. Because I think, I think Celtic teeth on their own is quite bad or can be quite bad. And, you know, like um, Anglo-Saxon then is after that. But if you are a mixture of like Indo-Celtic, basically, is the best teeth you can get for longevity. <laughs> Like the killer bees were a really nice bees mixed with really angry African bees and they became just, they were supposed to be better for honey, but they turned out to just be killer bees. Just going around with knives and shit. Just talking. Yeah. <laughs> See, I always promise people, Paul, that they'll learn nothing on my podcast and we're not five minutes in and all of a sudden we've learned that Sri Lankan cross with Irish teeth make the greatest teeth. Yeah, well, Indo-Celtic, yeah. I mean, uh, let's not exclude the one billion Indians who are probably in the category as well. Oh, they're, yeah, they yeah, probably get fairly pissed off about the whole thing. I think mm-hmm. the uh, the last time we were chatting, um, the last time we pr- probably probably hung out was nearly Selbridge, was it? I'd yeah. say we did a gig in Selbridge in that kind of rough old pub. Yes, yes. Uh, I probably, I don't really remember it because it was probably a bad gig for me. <laughs> oh, listen, it was it was going that way for a couple of weeks before that. It was, yeah, it just... I think we start- did one up north as well somewhere and you stormed it. It was so, like, um, I can't remember where it was. It might have just, it might have just been Monaghan, but it might have been further north, into the actual north. I'm, I'm not sure. But um, it was a pretty dodgy kind of vibe in the bar as well but you pulled the whole thing together you were emceeing and you you slaughtered it yeah it's it, normally when they throw me in the rougher the environment the better for me Paul more than anything it's that's that's what I found out the unfortunately yeah. like nicely groomed great audiences you know with well prepared people and you know with their their teeth all in the right direction normally don't suit me unfortunately it's just wild fucking you like a bit savages. of banter a bit of madness from the crowd yeah, I didn't realise I liked it mm. but it's, it seems yeah. to be just you know I'm in sync with those people for one reason or another I, I can't help it it's, yeah. the, it's the absolute lack of Indo that's what I'm missing I'm missing Indo crossover with me it's just pure, <laughs> pure I'm more inbred than inbred Indo Indo well, I'd say as well, all those, the, you know, the hecklers mates love when they get slagged, you know, yeah. which you, you can provide very well you know, with your comebacks and all, you know. Yeah, we were down, where were we? Was it down? Was it Joe? Joe was on. Yeah, myself, it was during a lift in, like, we went to level two or whatever, we were in Limerick. And Limerick is oh, normally okay. grand because... yeah. They're nearly a bit shy in that they, they're new. They're still a lot of them are new to comedy, but there was these couple of blokes, this gang of blokes in the corner who had, um, I'd say they'd read the first half page of How to Behave Like an Asshole at a Comedy Club. Right. Um, and they just kept on shouting shit and just wrecking everybody's said. And in fairness, Carl was hosting it. He wasn't putting these fellas away. like. And I just got really uh, Okay. And there's a girl on who's really good, but she was just struggling because they were giving her shit too. Like, and... I just, oh, okay. I said it to the manager. I went, "Man, look, are you going to say something, or do you want me?" And he went, "Oh God, that'd get a bit awkward, wouldn't it?" I went, "No, no yeah. because they're locals." I went, "Okay, well, I am going to have to verbally, you know, rape them all in front of your staff." Like, I went, "Yeah, yeah." Oh, what, what the? And I just went, to, and I, I didn't realize. I'm glad how you much... said verbally. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but it, it was probably as well uh, people hadn't been out in ages and they probably went nuts did they when they came out it was the all, no for 90% of the audience they were very well behaved but it was just these mm. lads were like just and the problem was their, their heckles were rubbish they were mm. absolutely rubbish they were miles behind things you know what I mean they were they, yeah uh, they hadn't they, been trained properly in no this, that's yeah. why you know if they only read half a page of the fucking start of the book so but the I didn't realise manual. how much I enjoyed Shouting abuse at grown yeah. men. I I didn't realize, and I really really enjoyed that. Now it was, uh, yeah, it was ter- also for me. It was probably, you know, after after the lockdown for so long, it was like this is this is therapy. Just shouting in public. Yeah, I think yourself and Carl are the best at that in terms of MCs giving as good as they get, like and just like destroying people. <laughs> yeah, it's it's uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's a natural born thing. The you played on that. I remember. How many how many instruments? Because I remember asking, how many instruments do you play? One. Your... <laughs> <laughs> I, I make it look like loads. No, uh, well, I, I just I can play a little bit of rhythm guitar, and I only learn enough to do like a parody of a song or enough for a joke. Okay, like, right. Because I'm not like I wouldn't be a musical comedian at all, but I like I I think that's a bit gets very self indulgent when you sing a whole fucking song yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I think if there's a joke to be made about a song, you know, if you get like just two verses, you know, like I know it sounds funny, but I just can't scan your brain. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it, that's it. There you get yeah. your laugh, and then you go into. So it's kind of in, labor intensive in that you have to learn the proper chords for that. But you only have to learn like two verses, basically. <laughs> And uh, that's really valid. Yeah, I never really. Yeah, because I wonder why I, I would wear off every so often, you know, when it's somebody's that you see the guitar coming out. And you're like, oh, fucking hell. Here we go. Yeah, I, then, I'm like that as well if I see one coming out. So that's why I suppose I just I would only use an instrument if I if, if there's a musical joke there, like if there's a joke that needs music, I suppose. But you, you sprung a, a what the hell? It was it looked like a mandolin, but it wasn't a mandolin. It was what? Did you oh, yeah. That was probably a Washburn uh, Rover travel guitar, yeah. No, uh, this wasn't. It, this was definitely. Uh, oh, was this a, a kind of a, concave a, looking yes, thing? Yes, it was. Yeah, it was ethnic. Oh, yeah. Was it that's... a sitar or something strange? It was. No, I do play air sitar. Uh, but uh, <laughs> I, yeah, those were the days. Going to the Ravi Shankar gigs. Um, no, but uh, yeah, I forget the name of that. It's it's like. Uh, uh, I'll I'll remember the name. It's a special type of guitar. It's just both of the ones I have are basically they're miniature uh, in terms of the body, you know, that, that produces the sound. But the actual fret length is the same as a normal guitar. Oh, OK. Right. So, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. the amount of frets you have and everything is normal guitar frets. But it's just handier for traveling and putting up in the luggage compartments of, of, of you know, planes and coaches and stuff. Because you so look much slankier handier. too, though, when you when you turn up and everybody else, you know, would may have a guitar and you've got this thing. It's like, you know. Yeah. I, well, it I gives don't... me an opportunity to say, I want to, I'll just want to play a little guitar now. And then you get <laughs> <laughs> the You said beyond the, the oh, because that's what I love about you. You're just, there's a, you know, you understand the silliness of it all, you know, because you yeah. can take, comedy can, ironically, can take itself very fucking seriously, can't it? Like. Yeah, it can. I don't, yeah, I probably, I don't really like to get very um, connected to an audience, really. I just want them to laugh. Yeah. And to kind of enjoy wordplay and stuff like that and stupid puns and all that kind of thing. Um, And I'm quite shy, I suppose. I don't really like to reveal too much about myself. Like when I started comedy, I only did characters because I liked, I can relax if I'm being someone else, but I couldn't be myself. Well, where did you start then? Was it in the international? Or where did you Where did you give? Uh, yeah, well, myself and Joe Rooney. Well, I was doing. Joe was in a band called Guernica, and I used to do support uh, or MC for their gigs, and I would just start started like telling you know jokes or doing characters. I'd be a character MC and introduce the band then. And this is like before there was a comedy scene. It was like in the right. Bagot and places like that. And um, then Guernica broke up and I was saying to Joe, you're like the funniest guy I know. You, you know, you should do comedy uh, with me. 
And so we started doing like things like that. Like we 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 were MC kind of comedians for uh, a gig in McGonagall's once uh, with Fugazi and Therapy with the two bands. Right. And we were kind of sandwiched <laughs> in between them. And we it was like a thrash metal gig. So we have all these, or we had all these diddly idol uh, piss take songs. And we, but we had to do like thrash metal versions of them. And I remember Joe got 50p. This was back in the pounds and pennies days. Uh, punts and pennies. Joe got, someone threw 50p from the back of the crowd and it hit Joe right in the eye. And fair play to me, soldiered on and we we finished the gig and all. But it was like we were getting pelted with stuff. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. What, what, what were, you, were you doing? Parodies of Diddly Eye songs? Yeah, parodies like, uh, you know, Ferdy Wack Diddly Diddle, um, The Mucky Mud. So, like, one of them was like, uh, well, me father was a potato till he went to America, where he got a job as a bag of chips and a local takeaway. Well, Father McPenty said to me, get us a, slo- a loaf of bread, five of father's cabbage and tea and a slice of old his head. All in the mucky mud, all in the mucky mud, all in the mucky, 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 mucky mud, all in the mucky mud, all in the mucky mud, all in the mucky mud. Yeah. Well, God bless the man, and it opens us up and fixes what's inside. Or else be God, I never found out it's me father that I fright. So it's no more down the hairy glen and up at the crack of dawn, throwing a donkey across the lip. Fianna Frosty Mon, all in the mucky man. It's just well, they went on like that. <laughs> I enjoyed that so much. I didn't mean to go on so long there, no, it just came I, back to me. <laughs> I was enjoying that so much. I was like, this is ridiculously brilliant. I but we did more, stuff like that, and then we we didn't really know what to do. Like we didn't know what comedy was meant to be like or anything. So we did that and we'd have then silly sketches and interviews and then adverts. You know, like quick little adverts in between. Oh, you, you have to tell me what your adverts were. Um, okay. Um, tired, lonely, depressed. Fuck off. With Fuck Off <laughs> Airlines, you can fuck off to anywhere in the world for only 29p. <laughs> and <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> fuck off. And uh, what was another one? Um, uh, late. Uh, uh, only four corners in your room. Come to Corners and Corners for more corners and better value. That's Corners and Corners just around the corner. <laughs> Sick of your shoes? Why not get a new pair at Lacey's, the shoe shop? Lacey's, the shop for shoes. Buy two, get one free. But like we'd be doing them and we'd be mixing the words between each other. So I'd be going like, buy two. And he'd go, get one. And i go, free. You know, like, so it would be very quick fire stuff, you know, because we'd be, we'd be dividing out the lines and all that. It's a pity, uh, pity, pity you didn't get that, you know, to get it down in, on tape, as they would say, you know, or at least get it, like, if you can remember that song like you did just off that, be no harm now that you have the technology, because you'd be able to do it back and forth nearly with Zoom at this stage, like, without actually... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We do have some of them, I think, from, like, Nighthawks and stuff like that. Oh, I can't remember. Hawks. Christ, yeah. I remember Nighthawks. Yeah, that was... Yeah, we did that, and then... Yeah, we did a lot of stuff in the international in the early days with, with Trellis and all, you know. Yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we did Edinburgh, but we had a terrible shite uh, couple of gigs in Edinburgh. And I, kn- <laughs> I knocked it on the head after that and uh, went, and, uh, you know, Joe Joe uh, went solo. And, I, yeah, I kind of stopped doing comedy for a while. And then I just sort of drifted back into it because not, nothing else. I found out I wasn't good at anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a fright when you find yeah. that out? It's like, oh, back I go. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, what, um, what like was there was there a family of you like are you the outcast or are you kind of an arty family or what was the crack a fam oh no yeah no my uh dad would be very serious fella very strict and yeah not very not very funny man at all <laughs> <laughs> and Which my mom was quite kind of funny, funny like. i think my mom told me once she used to do elvis impressions in school so i probably got it from my mom i'd say the 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 need to perform, uh, although I don't feel the need to perform as much as as I used to. I suppose I think I I used to just like acting, like being being a character was yeah, my favorite yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. and and writing for that kind of thing. I suppose there's nearly as in a way there's nearly you could argue that it's more creative that you have to put in the groundwork, build him up, and then actually work your character out. Like rather than literally just going, "Hey, how's it going? Uh, what about airplanes?" You know. Yeah, um, yeah. Like I, it, like. 
I had a few characters in the early days. Uh, like I had a guy called Barney Gunge, who was like a, a last American tourist, <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I did that for a while, and then I did a guy called Feckin' Egypt, um, who was just you know he just would take the blame for everything. I'm such a Feckin' Egypt. What am I like? Oh my god! And you know, <laughs> one of those type of guys. And yeah, just I didn't do stand up for a long time. I just did characters. Um, and because I, I hated the sound of my own voice, like when I just I'm talking like this, I, I don't mind it now. This could be from the, the voiceover artist, everybody. Though. I know, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's <laughs> how bizarre. ironic, like, isn't it? <laughs> well, because I used to, I actually had to hypnotize myself, like you know, uh, make a tape saying, I love the sound of my voice. You my did not. Voices. I did, yeah, did to, you? to yeah, and you and I listened to it again and again, like you have a sort of a script and you, you adapt it to yourself, like. To what the way you would say, it. but it's basically like I think I got it online or something. It was you know how to how to be confident in your own voice if you hate your voice or whatever that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, so I I had to hates write their own voice. That's a great, yeah yeah that's a great exactly trick. yeah. I wrote this thing and I used to just keep listening to it. Like I love the sound of my voice. Uh, I'm very relaxed when I'm speaking and all this kind of stuff, you know. And it did sink in, but it didn't really uh, sit, you know. I didn't notice any effect with the comedy, but I started getting a lot more voiceovers afterwards. Really? Uh, probably, yeah, just as a side, like a spin-off kind of thing. You do, in fairness, you do have a lovely voice. Oh, like, thank you. No, it is. So do you. I know I don't. Mine sounds like a pig shouting up an exhaust pipe. I know what I sound like. I've just accepted it. That's what it is. It's not a case of loving it. It's like just accepting it. I know. There's no such thing as a bad voice, though, really. Like, I find all voices, all accents and voices interest like really fascinating like I love I love I'm kind of known for doing accents I suppose like I do a lot of animation stuff so I you know you'd often get projects where you're playing five or six different characters so you have to change the accents Brilliant. the tones of voice the ages of the characters and everything so it all has to sound like it's all different people doing it yeah um, it, that's long drives with John Caleary like and just talking and th- honestly I'm fascinated by by accents and Ireland is so Unbelievably, a rich tapestry of the changes. Like, yeah, for such a small country, oh. there's a huge variety. Like, we we live near Bray, and it has to be one of the funniest, strangest accents. Like, people do impressions of of Katie Taylor, and they think, well, that's a one off. It's not. Yeah, so many people sound like her. This kind yeah. of, I'm not fully sure if I'm from Dublin or am I actually Wicklow. This is terrible. Now we lived in Port Arlington, Port Arlington. Oh. For about five years, and you know, well, like, well, our two boys were very small, and then we, and you know, we were just starting to think, God, you know, one day they're going to be coming in, going, "Mammy, daddy, mammy, daddy," <laughs> <laughs> there's a heifer on the main street, you know. <laughs> like, no, we okay. Let's move back to Dublin. <laughs> but that's very that's racist, borderline. Ra- I'm a racist. <laughs> I, well, look, but it, it is. It, I I sh- I absolutely share your views. I don't know. We're 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 moving soon enough back to Tipperary, back to South Tipperary. We're kind of a, it's kind of this accent. This is what it's. Oh, that's like. that's you know, a nice accent. Yeah, you can kind of get around with it. Like you the know. Midlands is very flat. It can be very, very flat, flat accent. You know, and, and they, 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 like. they drop uh, they drop all because we uh, we also prior to our son being born, we were living in uh, kind of awfully Kildare. That okay. Trifecta of uh, me and awfully Kildare. Right. Ac- and mother of God, I, 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 I actually did a bit about being on stage and just going there's some accents that you just you can do nothing with. Like, you know, yeah. professionally, you probably get segregated as a result of your accents. And, <laughs> and, I, and I remember I was in this queue in a petrol station and this woman, she was on the phone behind me talking to somebody. She was flicking through a wedding magazine because we we're yeah. right by the, the rack of, of magazines. And she was going, oh, yeah, what page is that? And she'd been directed by the woman to pick up on the other line to pick up whatever, go to whatever page and give her her yeah. view on whatever dress it was. She was like, oh, just, oh, yeah, here we go. Page 63. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She got to the page and she went, oh, Jesus. God, it's very sophisticated. And I went, <laughs> well, madam, I have to tell you. <laughs> the irony in how you just said the word sophisticated is fucking incredible. No T's in the middle of words. They do not exist. Computers yeah, yeah. and pee her. And that's, yeah. that was our fear with the young fella here because my aunt, she only rang the other day just to say hello. And her hello is, we've, we've now actually, <laughs> we've changed it to, you know, 
<laughs> Lionel Richie's hello. Well, this is, uh, when she rings up, she goes, hello. And it's like, oh, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> hello. It's like, oh, you just, you just kicked the life of the, of the phone call down the stairs there. Yeah. And is that like a, a, her, 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 a live voice or is that also on her messaging machine as well? I've never gotten through. To, no, I've never gotten her message. Her messenger would be hilarious. But the thing is, yeah. she would have been from originally from South Tipperary, but she has adopted that accent. And that's my fear. Yeah. We were going, it's our young fellow got to come in and go, here, ma'am, we're, you know, there's, there's, as you said, like there's a heifer in the middle of it. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what yeah. do we do here? Yeah, yeah. But I, I, there's, there's something I'd love to be able, I don't know what you would measure it on to get the actual, the, what the tone is. But in that part of Wicklow, because they're south, south Wicklow, their tones actually, only for the way they twist their vowels a bit differently, are very similar to Donegal. Right, that yeah. It goes up and down, like, the, you know. Up yeah, and down, yeah. And then all of a sudden, now you're up and down, you're up and, it's just a small bit of a, tw- like, because I remember, when they, the real cultures from down there where you can't understand what they're saying. Yeah. If you turned your back, you go, they could possibly, f-. and I mean, it's such a strange thing to find, you know, 200 yeah. miles of a difference in between the two, like. Yeah. And so many well, accents in between. I remember one time we went to look at a house in, I think it was like Rathdrum, kind of near Avoca. Right, Some, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I'd been talking on, and you know the way, like, you're really embarrassed if you don't know if someone is a man or a woman on the phone. <laughs> I've been talking to this the estate agent. <laughs> and uh, yeah, All the fucking time, man. Yeah. And the estate agent, I, I said, OK, so we'll, uh, I'll meet you just uh, at the, that shop just down from the house. And uh, um, <laughs> what's your name, anyway? And uh, the estate agent said, uh, yeah, I'm Leslie. And, oh, no. Uh, yeah, I'll see you there at the house at four o'clock. And uh, so when we got there, it was this little weird Lester Pickett looking uh, thing. Uh, <laughs> but like really like uh, with a really kind of gnarled looking face and massive ears, huge ears. And like really kind of uh Did you go to fucking Narnia or something. Where's you yeah, was like the, Oh yeah, we, it sounds we, magical like. Well uh, let me tell you. Uh when you <laughs> we we lived in a house called Narnia in Port Arlington, actually. That's no was, way. We, that was the only the first house we got and we couldn't afford Dublin, so I drove out to Kildare and I was gonna look in Kildare and then I said, oh, fuck it, I'll keep driving and I kept looking in like in the buy and sell and there's more and more houses further out you went, Mon- Monastery Heaven or Monster Heaven as we call it. And then <laughs> next one on was Port Arlington, which had all the train links into town because that's yeah. the main junction. So you get like 15 trains in and out a day. So that sounded good. And uh, we got a tiny little house uh, with a massive garden. So I thought this is a bit like Narnia. You go into a cupboard yeah. and then you've got a huge garden. And uh, yeah, so we called it Narnia just because you said Narnia there. But so anyway, it, this is in, back in Rathdrum when we met <laughs> Leslie <laughs> and... Leslie showed us around this this uh, house here. Now come up here and look around the house. Here you go. And we still couldn't work out if it was a man or a woman the whole time we were with Leslie. And we never asked in the end. But I think it was a man. I think it was a man. But it was a very small, wizened man with a very high voice and very yeah, uh, like um, gargoyly kind of features. And we just decided not not to go any further with that house. <laughs> but um, oh, yeah, I mean, most people in Wicklow and Arklow are lovely. Like we we for a while, for a good while, we had a holiday home out in, in Silver Strand in Wicklow. And that was great. Like, the town of Wicklow is lovely. Wicklow is lovely. And just Arklow gets a little bit more whinier, but there's more services there. So you've yeah, got a, yeah, 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 <laughs> so you got the cinema, swimming pool and everything. Well, the swimming pool in Wicklow. Though. But you've got nice shopping centres and stuff in Arklow. So it's kind of like, you know, you're going between the accent and the the price, house prices. Yeah, you, it's a cruel toss-up. Pull, you would be pulled out a bit. But that's, I mean... Not to uh, any of our Wicklow listeners, not to, to do them, it's just there's plenty of like uh, that. There's plenty of accents out there. Like I say, this is my accent from down home, but there are some lads. Like I don't know if you ever, do. You remember? Do you remember that video years ago? It was kind of circulating. It was before. It was before like the unbelievables or anything came on board. It was a guy commentating on a foot on a Gaelic football match. 
And oh, okay. Fucking and blinding as a oh, commentator. Right. And this had never been done before. And yeah. Kinda, yeah. Uh, well, this guy is from where I'm from. Like, and if you heard that yeah. accent, it's, you know, it's the most ridiculous. It's hilarious. But yeah. You could never. You would never take. You would never be somebody's solicitor with this accent. And I, right. that is a lot of like my father kind of has that accent. If you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Oh, Will, how's it going? Oh, what I know? Yeah, yeah. You're like, okay, relax. That's like a. Yeah, that's like a sketch we did for, on the Colin O'Regan. The Colin O'Regan wants a word. Um, yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah myself and, and Sharon did a, a few sketches on that. One of them was uh, like uh, that there should be more equality in in broadcast uh, about what people sound like. So you'd ha- there was one where Sharon was a doctor and I'm the patient and I'm like, so what do you think it is? And she's like, well, I tell you now, right? It's not very good looking good for you. Like, it's all shattered and all in there. And, you know, just flip over there and have a look and you'll help. And then, <laughs> so it's just like, why, why, don't, why can't we have doctors portrayed like, you know... It, it, by people of all backgrounds <laughs> and no, solicitors as well. You know, it was all those kind of gen, the stereotypical kind of um, middle class roles reversed. But it was very funny. But they kind of did that with Channel Four, though, didn't they? Like, especially their like their continuity announcers and stuff. Yes. They used to be very posh, and then all of a sudden, oh yeah, they have like some bloke who's like Sean Bean coming up next. On yeah, Channel yeah. Four. You know, yeah, so they got, got very regional, like. Let's find out what's happening on the news then. You know? <laughs> <laughs> the news readers should be like that. Well, yeah. I think they should be. Like you take, them, you probably take it more seriously, or at least it makes yeah. it a bit more jovial. Like if some fella, like some mad one of the Healy Rays offspring, like turns up, hello, yeah. Christ Almighty, do it. <laughs> yeah. so, you know, actually had him present. Yeah, yeah. God, God in heaven. God in heaven sent down rain upon you. Know you take, yeah. I think you take it a bit. The more weatherman, serious. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you did, because, sorry, go on, shoot, shoot away. No, I think we did, we actually did one of them, one of the ones on the Colin O'Regan show was a news one as well. It was very funny. It was all, it's kind of like that, more like Dublin heads doing the news. Um, yeah. And you, are, but are you, are you a dub? Because you have, you have a very nice accent like. Uh, well, uh, yeah, my mom is from Cabra, uh, Killala Road in Cabra, and my dad is from Sri Lanka, but they met in London. So I grew up in, in South London. Uh, originally ah, right. but I was always coming over for holidays to Ireland and then they got divorced when I was about 11 so I was over here a good bit then like for really long summer holidays and stuff and then and my uncles were quite uh, my uncles were my own age because she, right. she came from a huge family uh, one of them actually I think was young, younger than me but they were real tough like they were real heads like and they kept going what 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 are you saying what the fuck are you taking a piss or whatever? <laughs> like, and I, and like, so I never heard. Like it, yeah, yeah. I kind of got a beating out of me. And then I, I came to live here permanently when I was about 17. But because um, I just loved getting beaten up by my uncles. But uh, <laughs> no, they were very funny because they like, you know, and, and it's amazing the fir- when you first come to Ireland and you hear like, who's your, what's starting with your outlaw and your outlaw? <laughs> <laughs> I heard what? Sorry. What? It's not uh, it. But outlet, uh, you know, uh, uh, give a lend that, or I lend, I lend you that. I no. Can you borrow you yeah. that? I, that yeah, borrow, I'll uh, borrow you that. You give us a lend of it, and I'll borrow it. And uh, yeah, get up here with that, and all that kind of stuff was magic to my ears, like because I just I don't know. I, I, I yeah, I, I rarely find people who are who listen as t- as closely and c- try to depict it because I was trying to depict a guy that I met. And not so long ago, he's working at a building site near us here. And just every so often, I'd salute him. I just thought he was the most interesting. He looked like a praying mantis when he walked, even. Yeah. He's the skinniest human you've ever seen. He was like a white Snoop Dogg. And you could smell the weed like he was smoking it all day while drinking yeah. a can of Red Bull. Insane. And he was from, um, like, uh, Darndale direction, you know. Yeah. But I just, I, I, I had to talk to him because he was fucking fascinating. And when he was Paulo da. He just he wouldn't get his lips out of the way of the words because he yeah it, and it was almost like I won't be told by the man how to enunciate things correctly and had yeah. he had he just you know gotten his fucking own lips out of the way of of the words coming out of his mouth he would sound he would dictate properly but he wasn't he was like, yeah no and no, you know and who's fucking open the oh no who is that yeah. a damn yeah and you're like dude you are making a bigger job of this than you need to honestly speaking yeah. it's way easier than that like <laughs> but yeah do you ever find yourself like um you know 
If you knew them, you probably wouldn't be bothered talking. But because their accent or the way they talk is so interesting, you keep prompting someone to keep just talking. Yeah. Just because you just want to listen to more of the way they say things. I remember, I think one time I was in a taxi and this guy, he kept agreeing with himself all the time. And I found it fascinating. He was like, <laughs> he was like you know, uh, he was going... Yeah, and then they, uh, you know, they, they, they didn't have a, a, any on them. Yeah, 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 and they were, you know, they were, they were trying to sort it out. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was just fascinated, like you know, things like that. <laughs> you just want to hear more of it. Like this yeah. is amazing. Like he doesn't need anybody. It <laughs> just there's, there's a, or there's a, you know that that absolute rubbish talk that people do. Like the, I, I think he was he'd be a rel- like he'd be a relative of my a brother-in-law of mine. I don't know, was he an uncle or something? And he was giving me a spin into Cork City one time, and we talked about absolutely fucking nothing for twenty-five minutes, mm. but never stopped. He never stopped talking. If you know what I mean, there was nothing. There was no substance to it at all. But yeah, I found yeah. it fascinating that he could get through his day saying things like, "Oh, sure, no, huh? that's more of it." <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> say, yeah. It, say not no, and keep saying it. Sure, that it? No, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> yeah, and it's like there's a minutes of this. Muck. There's a circuit that most people have where they sort of vet what they're saying and some, you know, before it goes out. So there might be a little gap, but some people don't have that. Like they've they've bypassed the circuit and they just keep going. <laughs> they don't need yeah. any. Yeah, no, no prompting needed. I yeah. found um, I found I was reading your, your book is fascinating. Your book oh. is abs- oh, it's thank you. It's, it is a joy. Do you know what? And knowing what you told, like in the the way you said it beforehand, because you wouldn't know. You know, you pick up a book, you think, well, this is somebody who's clearly trying to write something very seriously, and this is that. You know, it, this is deep in their heart when they wrote this. Like, and when you kind of sent on the review, <laughs> the review, you're like, oh no, I tried to write a shite book, Tom. I <laughs> yeah, tried. Yeah, yeah. I tr- I made it went out of my way. And as you're reading it, knowing that, that's what makes yeah. it hilarious. Is because you know, <laughs> it's like the description. Of t- <laughs> or there were her big, long, lovely legs. So, you know, or, yeah, yeah. or, or if, if that really was her name. And there's no need to say that, or if that yeah. was, in, you know. And yeah, then, well, like, I, there's no need in half the things that are said in the descriptions, like America, the States. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was just trying to, uh, I suppose, amuse myself with the, the whole act of writing uh, and 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 uh, performing as well, because I do read it out sometimes and and it's kind of fun. like we did. We uh, Barry and myself kind of do a thing where he interviews me as Saul Tillich and I read bits from the book and, you know, and we did um, the Boris and Ossery, uh Literary Festival. We finish. We close that festival. Did you? Bef- this is you, yeah. Barry Murphy. Yeah, Barry uh, was Gunter interviewing me. Gunter and um, ah, brilliant. Yeah, brilliant. so and I'm this really serious, come across really serious because people are there all day watching these really serious authors being really serious about their work. Yes. So it's a big relief for them at the end of the day to have just this awful, awful writer uh, who thinks his writing is amazing, <laughs> reading out, reading out this stuff that is just. Uh, really bad <laughs> and I just thought yeah there's no one trying to write bad books they're all trying to write good ones so yeah, yeah that's the beauty of it and I was actually I was reading it I was going this is on par with Fifty Shades of Grey it was so badly written I was like this, yeah if Paul isn't well, careful here somebody's going to make a fucking movie of this and he'll be raging yeah. he'll be raging he's like no this isn't what I wanted at all I could read you out uh, yes a oh, bit please. If you want. This, is, now, this is the is that yes, coming out yeah, perfect. As yeah. a mirror image, is a mirror image in my thing. No, no, it's not. Oh. It's it's, okay. it's as as I see. It's a Saul Tillock. This is Chicago yeah. Blues. Chicago Blues available on Amazon and Kindle. Uh, oh, I will be putting this in the show notes Saul for Tillock. people to, to click through. <laughs> don't, don't you don't you worry. I'll just get people started off with the um, wait, the, wait our appetite. The start of the book of this incredible tome, <laughs> chapter one, the shadowy shadow. A howly type of wind was blowing like mad through the calm, still air of Chicago town in America, the States. Goldy rays of silver sunlight bounced reflectively off the shiny blue ripples on top of the water in the lakes, ponds, canals and other various water features all over Chicago town, America, the States. In one particular place, to be specific, a couple was walking along the street on an otherwise empty boulevard. Otherwise empty, that is, except for them. 
They were Jake Fritter and Amy Gladley, if that was her real name. <laughs> Tall, attractive, handsome Jake Fritter, who was really, really good looking with high cheekbones and everything like a male model, even though he wasn't one because he was an undercover private detective, was leading the amazingly sexy, long-legged, nice-faced, lovely-haired Amy Gladley, if that was her real name, by one of her two hands towards his high-class, ultra-expensive beachfront condo in the centre of Chicago town. Chicago Town, city of hope, fear, anger, joy and courage and 2.736 million people, each of them with a story to tell. 17 stories, some of them. Others only two. So if we say on average 11 stories, we're talking roughly 30 million stories. 31 million tops. And this was theirs, brackets, Jake and Amy's. Uh, Will I go on? I don't know. Yeah, oh my God, I'm enjoying this so much. Come on in, Jake said in his deep, manly Chicago drawl at the main door of his apartment block. And she said, OK, and she did. And they went in. <laughs> they had 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 enough of the Windy City. It's jazz music. It's famous museums of science and history. It's proximity to the Great Lakes and it's high crime stats. Short for statistics. <laughs> They had just met in a bar just around the corner and just liked each other just immediately because they were both just looking for someone just like that. He had backed into her front while looking the other way and spilt her drink and bought her another one. That's how they met. I don't want to give anything else away. Um, but uh, but actually the whole chat, the whole first chapter is available on the... When you click on the link, uh, it's like have a look free inside. You know the way they say you can have yeah, a look yeah, inside. Yeah. So you can see the whole first chapter there. Please tell me um, you're going to do an audio, an audio reading of that. For I people. am, yeah. I'm going to do the audio book of oh, it as well. The, 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 yeah, I read that and the, I, did, I did a total injustice inside my head because I was laughing and chuckling. But the fact that you just performed that was <laughs> <laughs> one. It was it was her hands was the fit that fucking I lost them. <laughs> when he held her hand, one of them. <laughs> Oh yeah! Listen, I'll send you a copy anyway. I'll send you. Uh, oh, I, I want a signed thing. copy too. Signed, yeah. please. Uh, by, not by yeah, Paul. I, don't know by, I want how to I'll do that. Uh, you, you, you. I'll send you a paperback uh, version of it, and then you can, uh, when you meet me next, I'll sign it. Beautiful. But uh, yeah, I can do that. As the author, you're allowed to send author copies. Oh, fantastic! So. That's br- I, I, I. Do you know what? That's what more the world needs more of is the the beautiful that like you the your mission from the outset was to write a silly book. Well, yeah. Like, did, like, did you... Because ha- there's so much... There's actually an awful lot in a lot of sentences where you have... To, did you have to go back over and go, I can actually add more stupid stupidity to this book? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Barry kind of mentored me a bit because uh, I just was doing it just on, like, you know, on, you know, the notes thing on your phone and I was yeah. just doing stuff like, like, you know, swathes of it and... Uh, he was going, oh, it's like just being constantly hit with a wet fish. Like, and you, you, the more of that you do, the better. <laughs> because yeah. it's just, it becomes really annoying to read. But, you know, for for a reader to read, it becomes quite annoying. Uh, <laughs> but in a in an addictive way, I think. Yeah, the, the, some of the reviews the, are absolutely fantastic as well. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, I couldn't put it down <laughs> because I never yeah. picked it up. <laughs> well, these are some of these. I think are a bit harsh. Uh, Tillich has single ha- Tillich has single handedly created a new genre: illiterature. <laughs> <laughs> Liam Walker, the Tipperary Tribune, uh, a real page burner. Andrea Swanson, West Boston Book Review, and a one word review here: egregious. Manly Tusk, the Essex Observer. <laughs> Best sellers aren't meant to be this good. They're meant to be much, much better. <laughs> Nick Lender, The View. That's from. I couldn't put it down because I wouldn't pick it up. That's from Brian O'Brien, The Literary Supplement. Books like this only come along once in a generation. Thank God. Layla Tyler, Hooper's Weekly. And I'll do one last one. In a world of average writers, Tillich stands head and shoulders below them all. Amy Twee. <laughs> The guide, a bit harsh, but honest, honest reviews. I yeah, no, that's you know that's what you want. I'm telling you, there's people going to buy it off the back of this just because we've gone into such a strange world at the minute now, where I don't think 
I think anything is what yeah. it used to be and everything's kind of got a bit sideways. I think people will want to go properly silly. Yeah, I mean, there is a story in it. I mean, uh, one thing I learned when I was writing, just trying to write as much nonsense as I could about actual characters, is that you need to have, it needs to be embedded into, an, there needs to be a bit of structure. Something has to of happen course, yeah. okay, to someone. Right, yeah, yeah. So there's lots of baddies in it and lots of sex um, lots of a few good sex scenes and oh, some vi- uh, some serious gun violence and some knife violence as well. Did and you go full Jilly Cooper when it came to like the the sex scenes? Uh, well, I could I could give you an example of a sex scene. Oh, lovely! Yeah, this yeah, is yeah, from please. a chap. This chapter is called Sex Frenzy. <laughs> uh, chapter seven. Uh, okay. She felt his hot breath on her face because he was breathing on it and the inside of his lungs were several degrees warmer than her face skin. And all their pent-up feelings got unpented, releasing pheromones and sexual emotions and the lust link of their mutual past that they both had, 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 had flared up again like one of those giant matches, you know, the fireplace ones. And they started tearing off each other's clothes like wild koalas in a sex frenzy (laughs) in the bargain bin of a clothes shop. Her lips were everywhere, not just on her face, but all over his body. And his hands were all over hers. Brackets, her body, not her hands. And their legs were intertwined like plaited hair, if you imagine flesh-coloured plaits with knees. She pulled him into her. Not all of him, just his penis. (coughs) They made love in spasmodic spurts of unadulterated adult abandonment interspersed with refreshment breaks and light reading. Eventually, it was all over and they just lay there banjaxed on the floor, panting like Labradors in a heaving pile of two bodies, exhausted, not doing it anymore. So that's that's the kind of steam... About. We're building oh, up there. My lo- I, 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 you know. I don't, don't even know how to continue. I might feel like I need a cigarette after that. That's incredible. Yeah, because I mean, that's one thing I find even in very good books that are supposed to be steamy that they, they're not really uh, as steamy as they could be. And I wanted to to make sure it was a, a, a stimulating sexual experience for the reader. You definitely, definitely did that. Yeah, my my mind is just blown after that. That's incredible. <laughs> You almost feel like you were there in between the couple. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a sticky sandwich. Yeah. Do you know, oh, good, Jesus Christ. And I always get such, uh, such a kick when I see, when I'm watching telly and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I am start binge watching a show called Informer the other night on, on Netflix and lo oh, great. and behold, I get such a kick <laughs> when I know some people like, ay! It's Paul. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, Paul, how, how did how did that come about? Because that was a, that was a squeak gig to get. I mean, you you feature in every bit of it. Like you, you get a that was a great role. Uh, yeah, I mean, granted, well, there's a total Irish touch there where you're pretty much drunk to the whole thing. Like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I that was in the contract because I can't <laughs> I can't act sober. Um, yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, I suppose because like. It, when I was uh, my my favorite comedy that I for for performing myself is always characters and that's yeah. probably I think I always liked acting you know and I did I had done a few plays here and there and um I did a sketch show called Stew where I play loads yes. of characters so that was a real yeah. that was a great training for me uh, in terms of of acting you know uh, as in character you know, in, in lots of different characters, but like just uh, you'd get more time at it uh, yeah. doing doing a show like that. And then I did a film called Halal Daddy with um, Deirdre O'Kane and Colin Meaney. Yeah, yeah Colin yeah, Meaney, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was good. And there was a good few Asian actors on that. And they were saying, you should try and get an agent in London because they're like, there's a lot more work there for people that look like us, you know. Right. So I was like, yeah, okay, uh, can I talk to your agent, please? And, uh, <laughs> so I didn't hear anything for ages. and uh, But then one of the, Art Malik was really lovely and he wrote a lovely email to his agent and so I made an introduction and then I kind of was hammering on their door 
for a good while and eventually they agreed to have a meeting with me probably just to get rid of me yeah and uh, it went well and the first tape that they sent me to do a self tape I was the informer and I got I got the part um actually well that wasn't the part I got the part I got was the, the undercover guy you know there's an undercover guy in it with the bad leg Yes, and right. I that's the part I went for, but then he got it, and then, so I thought, oh, well. And then a f- couple of weeks later, they said, we'd like to try you for the dad part, the father of the main guy. So I was like, wow, yeah, brilliant. And uh, yeah, so that, that worked out well. Um, and it's the kind of thing there where if you get work, then you kind of get more work out of it. Yeah, when, as a result, you know, no so. doubt. Well, I mean, it's a bloody good show, like too. You know, that's oh yeah, it's BAFTA I mean, it, nominated. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, I, I hadn't again because I don't watch an awful. I, sh- I just don't get around to watching an awful lot of television. But when you do, it's, it's and you land on a show like that. It's like oh, sweet as a nut. And then it makes it all the sweeter when you know somebody in it. It's like you know because you're yeah, in yeah. a small bit, like aren't you? You're kind of going oh well, you know, it's, it's Paul. You know, I Paul. Paul yeah, Paul, yeah, Paul. You know. <laughs> Yeah, it's good because it's a good thriller. Like it's a good, you, good who done it kind of. We we haven't thing. actually because it's episode six, the final episode is we're watching. Yeah, tonight, yeah. Well, oh, I I wouldn't give out in the way. Don't worry. Brilliant, brilliant. Because you am I right? Did you did you play like a an Amazonian chief or something in Father Ted one time? Or did I dream? Did I dream of Paul Tylak? No, I did. Yeah, I was in. <laughs> I was in two episodes. I was in the Christmas episode as a roadie. And I'd just go, ah, yeah, that's a bit, uh, getting mad feedback on that, Sean. Can you take it down a nuts? Um <laughs> <laughs> That was like for the, the Lovely Girls show or oh, something the they had on. Lovely Girls, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, on that Christmas episode. And then the other one was, the one that you're talking about was Kicking Bishop Brennan Up the Arse. Um, yes, at yes. The, yes, At the start of that, Father Ted has a nightmare that he's being thrown into a volcano by two Amazon warriors uh, and I'm one of them and he says ah here lads lads come on let, let's just talk about this would you not consider uh, converting to Catholicism and I just go in a real Dublin accent I go yeah well we would but we don't really agree with your stance on abortion and then we <laughs> <laughs> we just fuck him into the volcano and he wakes up then so uh, but do you do like the is the big the big thing at the I suppose of recent times is it voiceover? Because when you look at your IMDb, like you've done a fortune of animation, which must be fun too. Like yeah, the oh, I love the you animation. Must be allowed yeah. to do with with animation, like yeah, you definitely are allowed to be a lot more creative and mess around with characters because. Like it's not like when when you you know come on board with a film project or TV where the director has a very definite idea of the character of what they want to do. Generally, with animation, the directors are very open to. They give you a steer on it, but they're open to to see what they they want you to try different voices and try different, right, you know, yeah, kind yeah. of characters and sort of impressions and stuff like that or whatever you are, you know, a mixture of an impression and a character kind of thing. And uh, so it's a lot more. It's it's a lot of fun to do, and obviously you don't have to learn lines because you can just read the lines. Of so, course, yeah, yeah. I didn't even think of that. Yeah, yeah, it's it's yeah, it's great. Um, what's the mo- what, what what have you done? What's the most recent one? Have you been able to do ones in lockdown? Because you obviously have your studio there. Which yeah, is, yeah. You're you're doing... cooking nicely in, but just <laughs> but <it looks laughs> yeah, yeah. Paul is having to have Flappy's just door every so often behind. Just get to the let some air, air conditioning in. going here. Um, yeah, I'm doing one at the moment called Alva and the Trolls, which is by Cavalier Productions. And that's a great, uh, uh, you know, lots of different characters in that. Um, that. And they're all very different characters as well. So that's, yeah, I like doing like, you know, very different characters in a thing because it's more of a challenge. Uh, there's one kind of Joe, he's, a, he's like Joe Pesci kind of character. Yeah, hey, come on, what are you doing? What, what's going on here? Get out of here. And then there's another guy who's almost a bit like Neil from The Young Ones. Oh, I love yeah. it. Love it. He's yeah. kind of, well, I don't really know if we should do that. And uh, then there's another guy who's kind of the mayor of the town. He's like, well, we, we, we should really try to make sure that everybody gets what they want from this. You know, so it's all these different uh, kind of, uh, it's challenging to do, but it's real fun. I can imagine, yeah, because your your inner child comes out, doesn't it? Cause yeah, that's what, 
exactly that's yeah really what it's all because immediately because like i suppose even doing something like informer where you're having to be it is a serious show even though you know what i mean obviously you're, you're the dad and you're you're almost the light you're the light in the room like you're, the, mm. you know there's there's light yeah. when it comes to you because like oh, i'm still turning you know the world or whatever is still turning and but i'm half pissed so yeah it's, you know you're well a bit it's more, yeah i mean i did that was quite a serious show and yes. It did need light relief, like it, uh, not that it needed it, but the the writing was so good in it that you could have a lot of lighter moments in yeah. the real tense kind of overall kind of vibe of it, and a lot of that came, and it sort of very much humanizes the Asian family in it and makes you realize they're just like us, you know. Everyone yeah. is is very similar. They're London Asian. They're just like you know any Londoners, you know. Living and in the, the flats and and the accent you went for there was that did you decide well this is the one, well, this is one I've heard before I'm going to go for that one like uh yeah well I kind of I suppose I researched a bit like he's kind of he's sort of from Hackney and uh, yeah he's like I kind of tried to I, I, I suppose it's an amalgam it's always an amalgam of different things you do a lot of research like YouTube and well I do yeah. anyway I I try and l- listen to as much people uh from the background and the the locality of where i'm supposed to be playing and then i sort of add in a bit of probably just natural humor to it i suppose yeah yeah yeah. um but i mean i was trying to be serious uh and it ended up being a sort of a a comical character so it's just like my writing my books (laughs) i try to write serious books and people read them and go yeah, you should write for kids. <laughs> <laughs> well, I also, I suppose, from my point of view, I'm watching and go, well, that's Paul Tylek right there. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. He, but he that's... definitely didn't do no more dern. You know what I mean? He's... <laughs> <laughs> but that's the thing as well. Like, it's, uh, I think I've been lucky in that I haven't had hardly any, pro- I don't think of any profile in, in Britain. So it's not like you're not, people are prepared more to take you seriously because they don't know, they don't associate you too much with comedy. I know for a lot of comedians that can be, a a, if they're really well known, it can be very tough for them to get, if they're interested in acting, it can be tough for them to fulfil that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could see that all right. It can be kind of labelled a bit. By oh, by not just by your audience, but by directors and casting people, just don't take oh, yeah. it seriously. Well, so you know yourself, like quite often you could be looked over because they just can't see beyond the fact that oh, yeah. well, this guy you used to tell jokes, even though you know it could be yeah. you might be the greatest in the world. That they just can't see beyond that sometimes. Like yeah, well, Barry told me that because he's a good mate of uh, uh, the fellow Stuart Carolyn that that wrote. Um, Love hate. I said that at one point they were considering me for a part. I I, I heard about this a few years later. You know, <laughs> it's like they're considering me for a, uh, like the, it wasn't even a great. It was the shopkeeper where your man gets shot at the start. Um, oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. they're going, ah, oh, no, we couldn't have him there because he's everyone knows him for comedy. So and I was like, well, you, Jesus, it's only a little. T- t- I could have easily done that, <laughs> but you know that that's sort of the I attitude. Worn, I would have worn a hat, lads, for fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever yeah. you want. And shades. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, immediately, because in my... And this is what it is, is by association, because in my head, the second you said shopkeeper, it was the... What had happened was, in my head, it went straight to the one where you were in the Savage Eye. And oh, right, yeah. I make savages, they're supposed to be gale gores, and they're trying to... Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Fucking, fucking, what, what do you fucking... Do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm guilty of it, too. As soon as you said shop, I went, yeah, what well, Paul is perfect. Yeah, he wouldn't... Yeah, that's it. But it's a comedy shop. Yeah, I did, yeah. Do you know what? I've taken up. Do you have any more of that glorious book that you would dare read me before? Because oh. I got such a kick before we before we head okay. away. Because that was uh, such a joy. Okay, uh, uh, I could. Yeah, uh, this. So uh, this is a bit where he's um, gone to. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is where he goes to the police station. Okay, um, and he has a friend uh, who I stupidly gave a name with no vowels in it <laughs> uh, and I his name is there a lot so I uh, uh, well I I kind of deliberately did it because it, it would annoy the reader um, <laughs> what and, a tactic yeah so okay so he's driving frantically trying to get help to find his missing girlfriend um and to find out who's just attacked him and all this kind of stuff but I don't want to give too much away but yes uh, so chapter 8 
Klisnitskids. That's the name of his mate. The policeman. <laughs> The rain on the windscreen was like millions of diamonds that had been polished to roundiness, halved, then glued onto curved car glass. Jake didn't care and wiped them off with the wipe of his wipers. He was driving like a madman who'd been let loose, brackets without his regular medication, in, f- <laughs> in the front part of a car. He drove over bridges and through tunnels, past pet shops and playgrounds, along cobbled country lanes, across overpasses and along freeways. He broke several red lights, maybe more, and then, <laughs> worried worried that everything was taking too long, he took a shortcut and skidded to a halt outside the police cop station. As the skid dust settled around Sarah's Mitsubishi Lancer, which luckily he'd found the keys to and knew how to drive. It revealed an old concrete window-pocked red brick building, run down, dilapidated and flea-riddled. It reminded him of the buildings he'd seen in documentaries about buildings. Except... (laughs) Except this one was full of police cops. Living, breathing, fighting, jumping, yawning, sitting, typing, staring police cops. He went inside... Who are you here to see? said an elderly female police cop woman behind the glass fronted hello counter. With a gnarled bonsai, brackets tiny Japanese tree hand, (laughs) she flicked the dust off her huge signing in book that visitors are meant to write their names down in. She handed him a pen while he answered her. He didn't like doing two things at once, so first he signed, then he handed her the pen back, then he answered drawing himself up to his full height in feet and inches. <laughs> Officer Klisnrenalolo Kritz, he said, in his deep chiselled Chicago drawl. He was trying to sound casual, but deep down inside, he felt like this was one of the most urgent types of situation you could be in. Like when you need to use the toilet, but there's someone in there and you have to wait, and someone else <laughs> says, why don't you go and pee in the lane at the back? But you can't, because it's a number two, and you don't want to <laughs> tell them that. Because they'll probably know that two means poo. (laughs) And who might you be, she said with one eyebrow raised and her lips curled into the lip section of a sarcastic expression. I might be Jake Fritter, he said, rebounding her attitude right back at her in return, like a squash ball from a squash tournament wall. At the mention of his name, the elderly woman's curt grumpiness suffered, softened to gruff disinterest. I'll let him know you're here, she said, and then mumbled something mumbly on the phone to someone he couldn't see. (laughs) Minutes later, even though it seemed much longer, because the number of minutes was unspecified, she told him he could go in and go down the corridor and go left, take your first right after the photocopier and it's the second door on the right, just past the mops and the cleaning stuff. You can't miss it. (laughs) Thanks, he said, and he went that way and then he was there. He knocked <laughs> He knocked gingerly, even though he was a brunette. Ha ha, only joking. <laughs> he just knocked moderately hard. Yes, came a familiar voice. Jake went in and sat down. Well, 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 said Officer Klim Klisnrek <laughs> looking up from his big old untidy police cop desk. What can I do you for? Which was his police cop jokey way of saying, what can I do for you? <laughs> Jake looked at his old friend's face. Time had been good to him. He had hardly changed. You still look the same as last week, Jake said. <laughs> look, Jake, said Officer Clisen Rixflix, I don't have much time before my afternoon shift, so do me a favour, hurry up, get to the point. Don't prevaricate, elaborate or beat around the bush. Keep it short and simple. Just tell me why you're here and tell me fast. No dilly-dallying, shilly-shallying, <laughs> messing about or fumble-bumbling and no time wasters, please. Jake liked his old friend's expansive directness and felt a warm glow of comradeship and chumly camaraderie. I won't go on because it gets... Oh, <laughs> <thank you. laughs> Oh my god, that made me so happy. <laughs> he knocked on the door gingerly, only joking, it's a brunette. Like, the, yeah. how much fun you must have. Like, yeah, because it is. It, 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 well, I had to be I, careful with any ga- actual gags. Like, I had to make sure. Of course, sure, yeah. You know, because yeah. it's supposed to not be funny, but just. But what, like, uninten- see, you, it's like unintentionally funny, meant to be. I just imagine <laughs> you reading it at a festival, like, with a, wearing like a, a turtleneck. 
you know. Yeah. In oh a, yeah, yeah. A pair of like ironic glasses. Yeah, know, yeah. Not, not actually functional, proper, good, like a- ironic glasses. Yeah, yeah. Know? Serious writer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Paul Twilight this has been an absolute joy I will of course uh, put. and we never got to talk about the improv the improv is, st- is still running oh, isn't it every Monday night at 9 o'clock on Zoom like we are now uh, but you know the links are all up on Facebook on the Comedy Improv site Dublin Comedy Improv and uh, on Twitter on I think it's like Dublin Improv on Twitter but uh, yeah we, we, we send up links to it uh, every week and it's on at nine o'clock on Monday night so if you're not doing anything if you don't happen to be going to the pub you uh, could well, uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> so that's everybody can tune in and watch go. it like, and you can make suggestions you know using the chat as well for which go into oh, all the games oh brilliant yeah 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 Fantastic! Pretty much everybody on the improv has been on the show at some stage, oh, <laughs> or, gosh, or gosh. not. So you're the, you're the last missing piece, and what an absolute joy, Paul! Thanks a million, man. Thank you, Tom. Good to talk to you. And my thanks again to Paul. Good on you, Paul. Like he said, Chicago Blues is easily purchased. Just look down the show notes below, where you'll see the link for Patreon and the merch shop, and click on through. It's cheap as chips. You get the first few pages, I think, for free just to read through and just have a giggle anyway. Of course, they have the Dublin Comedy Improv. Follow them on Twitter. Twitter's probably the most likely place where you'll, you'll see uh, updates coming from. They're brilliant. The lads, I've had everybody on the podcast. I've had every one of those lads on. They're fucking brilliant. So do yourself a favor if you want to join in on some comedy. That has been the podcast. You know what to do if you're listening on Apple. Give it a review. Give us a lovely out review. Keep your ears peeled, your eyes scratched, and whatever else for the Tom and Jerry show. Follow him on Twitter because McBride actually controls the Twitter machine because he's good at that kind of thing. So he would be updating you as to when we release it. If you want to support the podcast and jump on board with me here, you can, of course, go through the Patreon link and there is the merch page if you want to buy some stuff with the logos on it. Other than that, do you know what? Boys and girls, mind the snow, mind yourselves, put on in a warm coat, sop a tea. And I'll talk to you again next week. Good night, God bless and thanks.